to Kailua. Welcome to Kani Kapila in Kailua. Um, we have great Hawaiian music coming up for you guys, and I'd like to introduce them to you. On the bass, we have Kalani Kakit. Hey, aloha. aloha. On steel guitar, here we have Alan Akaka. And our lead artist today is Mr. George Kuo. Aloha. We'd like to thank A and B for sponsoring Hawaiian music here in Kailua. We'd like to thank you folks out for for coming and we'll let them take it away. Right on. Thank you. Okay. Well,
Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Oh, you know, they advertise this as Kani Kapila in Kailua. That's what you're going to get. Kani Kapila. You know, Alan, Kalani, and I have been around for a long time, and that's our favorite style of music when we're just getting together in the backyard. Of course, you got to have the cooler and the hibachi going. <laughs> and the music sounds more, you know, the, the later you play into the evening, the better the music sounds. <laughs> so, you know, we're just very privileged to have Alan filling in for uh, Greg Sardina today because Greg is in Taiwan, but they're, they're two of Hawaii's most notable steel guitarists, you know, and um, we're so fortunate to have that their level of uh, talent that they have and all the years that they've dedicated to playing uh, the instrument, the steel guitar, and on the bass, by way of um, Punahou class of 1981, hey. we have Kalani Kakit, and he's been performing many, many years when he first started out in the Bay Area with Saichi Kawahara and the Kapala Kiko Hawaiian band with Nahoa Lucas and another great steel guitarist, Doi Tokumoto. Mm. And this year, we're honoring Saichi Kawahara at our Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame uh, in Duck Lay of Stars. And thanks to Alan for inducting uh, Saichi and Kalani and uh, Nahoa Lucas who will also be um, representing Saichi and, some, and playing some of his music that they played for many years. They held up the Hawaiian music in the Bay Area and all the groups, the big groups that would come to San Francisco like the Brothers Casimero, Ledward Kapana, it all, and myself, even Sons of Hawaii, Sons of Hawaii. Sons of Hawaii we would always stay at Saichi's and get greeted by Saichi and had a great time. And so what a wonderful way to sh show, to honor Saichi this year by having him in the Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame and inducted. <laughs> Induction. So we're going to do a song, a medley of songs. And, um, It's our favorite song. Some of our favorite songs are traditional Hawaiian music with uh, Hawaiian kihu all of this, the slack guitar that I'm playing over here with the two necks of uh, my favorite tunings, the C Mauna Loa tuning, and then a G Taro Patch tuning. And Alan is playing a stew guitar on his favorite tuning. <laughs> right now it's C6. It's the only thing I have on this. So Hawaiians are very creative in loosening the strings, but the slack guitar first, in this, in which evolved into the steel guitar after Joe Kekuku got a railroad boat in the early 1900s and put it to his steel guitar. And today we have the electric steel guitar. So here's a medley of our favorite songs on uh, Hawaii, the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in Hene Hene Ko'aka. Your laughter is also pleasing. And this first song, the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, was written by Mary Pua Ala Robbins commemorating the grand opening of that pink palace, the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, and all the fine uh, luxuries that are there. Today they call them um, senior living, uh, <laughs> retirement homes, but the luxuries that they had back then was just, oh, so wonderful. The silk sheets and the wonderful food and room service. <laughs>
is also pleasing. Henny Henny Kowaka. Taking that trolley ride around Honolulu. Oh, and stopping to eat beef stew at Kaka. <laughs> Kalani could use some right now. <laughs> little, little he had his be good. celebrating his birthday weekend, and he it was hammer time last night at <laughs> on the, the shores of Diamond Head. The music was good. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we do that song for you? Last night we had a wonderful, wonderful time celebrating him and uh, his uh, classmate Bitsy's. Um, Kelly. Yeah. Kelly. Bitsy Kelly's birthday at, at uh, Kaimana Hila on the slopes. A beautiful night with a bonfire and, and uh, some wonderful beverages. <laughs> mm. <laughs> See.
doesn't have. <laughs> right, Tom. What about my new lies and Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hawaiian who lies. Yeah, Hawaiian. Okay. Hey, why don't we sing happy birthday? Yeah. Are you yeah. Keith Kalani? How old are you? 56? 23. 23. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was your age last year. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, sorry. 22. 23. Wait, how many years did you stay back in Punahou? <laughs> how many years they held you back? <laughs> <laughs> Graduated from St. Louis, then I went to Punahou. <laughs> <laughs> and you went changed back to St. Louis. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday It was incredible last night, the food that we had. We had all these beautiful corned beef and cabbage on the Woo! beach right over there. And we had some single malt Irish whiskey, Sexton. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's on sale at Tamura's. It's really good. <laughs> I never knew how good it was until I went there giving a free sample uh, tasting. And then I said, wow, this is, I normally don't drink uh, too much uh, whiskey, but I said, this one was good. <laughs> On sale at Tamura's. Ten dollars off. It's a twenty-dollar bottle. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I have to eat right Just now. Just in time for St. Patrick's Day, huh? Yes. Ooh, corn beef absolutely. and corn beef and cabbage and and single malt Irish whiskey. <laughs> yeah. And Tamura's is paying George for that for that advertisement right there. <laughs> okay. Ritz. The Ritz? No, Ricks. Oh, I, don't, I don't recall that place. It may have been George Kaumoku. <laughs> yeah, the other George. Hey, we get mixed up, you know. I get some call. I was getting a call at my work. I worked at the Board of Water Supply where every good. I worked at the city and county of Honolulu where all the good Hawaiian musicians worked. Gabby Pahinui, Sonny Chillingworth, Ata Isaacs, and all the sons, all the children. <laughs> and then, so I get this call. Hey, George. Congratulations, you won the Grammy Award. <laughs> they go, oh, you meant George Kahumoku. <laughs> <laughs> so they, that's why Kavika's up there. He's not, he, normally Kavika would be here. He's working really hard, touring, and having a lot of fun up there with George Kahumoku and Nathan Avail uh, touring the mainland. But we miss that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to San Francisco very soon in, in the Bay Area. Well, that was a regular thing going with when I was with Dennis Kamakahi and Raymond Kane before and with the Sons of Hawaii, and then later on with Martin Pahinui and Aaron Mahi. <laughs> so far. <laughs> and, th oh, thank and you. thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We're going to feature uh, Alan over here, one of our great Hawaiian steel guitarists of today, Hawaiian hula eyes. Any hula dancers?
sing Hawaiian Ulaan. When you dance, you hypnotize. Though I can't believe it's true. And thank you to our hula dancer back there. <laughs> and all those singing along, too. <laughs> well, actually, later on, we can do more sing-along songs, yeah? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are plenty. Pupua o Eva, or, you know. Yeah, all those And the list goes on, yeah. All those Moluka wonderful. All those wonderful Kanikapila songs. Yep. That we have. Makalapua, you know, Kanikapila songs. <clears throat> So, you know, I'm, you know, I still love to carry on the legacy of performing with the days of uh, performing with the Sons of Hawaii. Back then, with Joe Marshall on the bass, and of course Dennis Kamakahi with all the wonderful songs that he's written and left for us today, and the world's greatest ukulele player, the leader of the group, uh, Eddie Kamai, and what 
Eddie did. Eddie's contribution was bringing back the old music and making it very popular today. There's many songs now that he's uh, put together, but also besides writing songs, he researched a lot of the old um, Queen Lilio Kalani songs and brought them back to life and made them very popular along with his ukulele playing and back then and also in those days of they had Gabby Pahinui on the slack key guitar and David Feet Rogers on the steel guitar and Mo Keale and many others before them. Everybody was part of the Sons of Hawaii. Everybody who was in Waikiki before, believe it or not, with Don Ho and the gang was Sonny Chillingworth, Zulu from Hawaii Five-0, Gilbert Kauhi, he was part of Sons of Hawaii. <laughs> so, the, you know, the list goes on and so this is my favorite song that I used to love to do with Eddie, and I always would ask Eddie, you gotta do this song whenever I'd see him in the nightclubs, and he said, oh, I forgot the words. <laughs> so he, when I finally started playing with him, he said, I said, Eddie, can you do that? Let's do that song. He goes, you do them. Here's the words. <laughs> and then, so, um, you know, it's a beautiful song of uh, this next song of uh, called the Manu Kapalulu. Yeah. From the island of Maui, Queen Liliuokalani wrote this song for the children of Hawaii. And she didn't have any children, so today she left behind her Liliuokalani uh, Children's Foundation to help out our, our Kiki uh, Okaina, the, uh, our <coughs> who are in need. And then, so this song takes place in Kilohana. Maui, a very sacred place, and in the chorus, she tells them, Kuli, Kuli, Aoya O, you Manu Kapalulu. She's calling, not to, uh, the Manu Kapalulu in Hawaii means quail, but she was describing children as noisy quails, like a flock of quails that can't stay still. So she says, Be still, listen to me, you know. But when we're growing up, you know, we say, when we're told Kuli Kuli, that means you better be quiet. And say, oh, shut up! <laughs> kids, those little kids, you know. <laughs> you know, I used to tease Martin because he had 10 kids growing up in the Pahinui house. <laughs> and Gabby, his father Gabby, when he says shut up, oh man, it's a mean shut up. <laughs> but this is a very poetic way <laughs> of saying, listen to me, be still. Oh, you noisy little children, you flock of, you, you manu kapalu can't stay still. I see we have several here that are some of our Manu Kapalulu that are very, very nicely well behaved. And wait till they get out, wait till they get home. <laughs> here we go.
as Joe Marshall would say, yeah, right, right on, on peoples. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Right on. <laughs> featuring Kalani Cockett. Si. And after our long cold spell, now we're wishing for the breezes again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Star Colony. <laughs> wow, terrific, brother. You guys are Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming out today. You know, this is a sound that's not often heard. And a lot of it is because we're old. <laughs> <laughs> We've been around a long time. <laughs> and we play in garages a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we grew up. Just, it's a lot of it, give and take. Alan and I, you know, the instruments, pawning off of each other, playing together, and just, you know, give the eye, and that's, that's how we, you know, that was a good fun days of just going on and on. Sometimes the song goes on for 20 minutes, you know, half an hour. <laughs> It's a steel guitar. Yeah, it came from the slacky guitar. And he can tell you, if you want to take lessons, Alan has a Kekula Mele Hawaii. He's a very, right here, very right here in Kailua. He's a world famous musical, music, Hawaiian steel guitar teacher. And if you want to learn any other forms of Hawaiian music, yeah, tell him about the steel guitar, Al, a little bit. Big difference between this steel guitar and the dobro, well, the dobro is normally an acoustic <laughs> instrument, yeah? Of course, you can put a pickup in it so, so you can play through the system like we are doing right now. This steel guitar is one of the first electric guitars ever built. This is before, you know, rock music came about and so on because, you know, the original steel guitar was a guitar. It was a regular acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. What they did is they raised the strings up right over here so that when you use this metal bar over here, you don't hit the fret, you know. Yeah, watch out, yeah, if you drink too much. Look out, Alan. Yeah. Here you come. Okay. Here <laughs> the muck Look out, Alan. Here so come. going way back to 1885, there was a young boy by the name of Joseph Kikuku up in Laie. He was walking al along the railroad tracks near his home, and uh, he stumbled upon this, this metal boat. Probably belonged to the track, so he picked it up, and he, he grabbed his guitar, and he started, you know, playing, you know, you know. And that kind of sparked this new idea for playing the guitar. So he took it home, he tried other, other things, such as uh, adult out, razor blade, maybe a pencil, a pocket knife, a comb. And then his teacher at Kamehameha, Mr. Patikin, made a bar for him. I guess he, he knew what Joseph was doing. So he made a bar and that turned out to be really good. Well, years later in the, the, at the turn of the century, Joseph and many other young people from the islands went to the mainland to seek their fame and fortune. And they took with him, of course, the Hawaiian music. Right, and that's how Hawaiian music got into the the U.S. mainstream. You know, the music and everything shows started to pop up, um, like uh, the Bird of Paradise. It went all the way to Paris, France, and supposedly Joseph played this new instrument known as the Hawaiian guitar. He didn't know what a steel guitar was. It was so new. The Hawaiian guitar played there at the Paris uh, in in Paris again for the bird of paradise and then the, these uh, hawaiian troubadours started showing up all over the place you know going through the deep south and thus this this hawaiian instrument the hawaiian guitar actually and this is this is written up you know so you know um you know it, it's in the book and it says that it it inspired and influenced the blues players especially Delta Blues. I mean, even B.B. King said that he remembers hearing the Hawaiian guitar. And that inspired to do what he did, but he didn't put, use a bar. He used his fingers and whatever he could to kind of get that sound. And then years went by, and then, of, of course, Hawaii Calls came about, you know, and um, they broadcast Hawaiian music, the singing, the, and then the Hawaiian steel guitar, you know. <laughs> things like that and um, so you know people fell in love with the music it became very very popular uh, 
the media was really helping Hawaiian music uh, get across, not only in the United States, but around the world. Recordings, magazines, later on movies. Yeah, do you remember Mind Pa Kettle in Waikiki? You remember that? What about uh, Waikiki Wedding? Waikiki Wedding, that was back in 1937. Bing Crosby sang a song that w would later become, in the next year at least, would, would win an Oscar for the best song in the movie, and that was Sweet Leilani. And also in that movie came two other songs that we still do today. One is Hula Heaven, and the other one is Blue Hawaii. The same Blue Hawaii that Elvis sang in the movie Blue Hawaii. And so, the, you know, there was music all over the place. Uh, you know, the movie Bird of Paradise, and then there, there was Hurricane with Dorothy L'Amour, and, and so on. So all these Hawaiian songs came about. And then, you know, leading from all of that, you know, Hawaiian music became so popular, and the Hawaiian guitar, and the glissando sound was what people thought was Hawaii, you know? Yeah. Looney Tunes, right? <laughs> <laughs> or, or this. Do you remember this song? This is from a Hawaiian guitar. The Dobro came in about the 20s. Did it what? I'm sorry? Yeah. Did it came come before? Preceded? Did it come? No, the Hawaiian guitar was before. It started everything, right? And, and then Dobro and there was also the, um, the Weisenbarn. They came out about the same time. They were both acoustic instruments. One was made with some sheet metal on it. The other one was just wood. And then, then came the electric guitars. And the rest is history. Yeah, the same, this is that yeah. same guy who invented the Fender electric guitar pickup. Uh, and that was the first electric eh, from a telephone. He, the father worked for the telephone company, uh, and he wound the wire around the magnet. Remember that? <laughs> and, and just to let you know that there was a local boy from Maui that worked for Fender that supposedly invented the electric bass. And, and, and did the Fender uh, speaker cones and everything, and even the Stratocaster. The Hawaiian musicians of the turn of the century, right around 1900, had huge, huge influence on the music of America and the world. Yep. So when uh, Joseph Kikuku was touring the United States and the world with Mikia um, Kelakai from the Royal Hawaiian Band, they were the Royal Hawaiian Troubadours, and um, and Makia got met with Mr. Martin, who made Martin guitars in New York on the trip. He says, hey, we're playing uh, acoustically, but your Martin guitars aren't loud enough. So they reconfigured a Martin guitar to make it louder, which is now the most, it's like a D, the D18 or whatever, it's the most popular acoustic guitar in the world. That was in 1905 that they, they wow. came up with that. And then, you know, the steel guitar preceded the dobro. Um, the Hawaiian, Hawaiians, and that, at that time, actually, Hawaiian music was more popular in the world than it was here in Hawaii. Um, they were at the Chicago World's Fair. They were in the New York World's Fair. They were in Paris World's Fair. Hawaiian troubadours were all over the world. Yeah. When no one was really playing music here, Hawaiian music here. Aloha Hawaii was the most popular song in the world. Yeah. The whole glare of music, exactly. Yeah. Well, I like to add my comment. You know, country music became one of the most popular styles today, and everybody plays, has to have a steel guitar in their country music. And ironically, in Hawaii, in the 70s, 60s, maybe 70s, a uh, Hawaiian steel guitar was being lost in terms of the players. You know, the old people, the younger guys like my age and Alan's age who we weren't learning it. And it, ironically, it took a, a Nashville country steel guitarist to come to Hawaii and re pop, re energize the Hawaiian steel guitar among my generation. Jerry Bird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he wanted to become a Hawaiian steel guitarist. And that was, a, you know, the. the uh, to what he influenced the younger generation in, of Hawaiians, younger Hawaiians. Oh man, it brought back the steel guitar. <laughs> Amazing. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, now there's a lot of us, including elementary school age kids, playing this instrument. 
Yeah. Hey, by the way, one more factoid before we play a song. Do you know, in country music, do you remember, anybody remember Jimmy Rogers, the country singer? Okay, one person at least. Okay, Jimmy Rogers recorded, he wanted, he recorded, I think in New York, so he hired a Hawaiian band, Lonnie McIntyre and his orchestra. So Lonnie McIntyre had a still guitarist, and he played on the recording, and that still guitarist was a Hawaii boy. So the very first country still guitarist was a Hawaii boy. Can you imagine? <laughs> it started everything, and look where still Amazing. guitar is in country music today. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. The yeah. Hawaiians, how they got around. The influence, the influence of Hawaii yeah. musicians. Yeah. In today's music. Yeah. Hollywood, the Hollywood still guitar and today the ukulele yep. being played with rock and roll bands and yep. everything. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you bet. Heavy metal rock with ukulele. <laughs> 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 okay, can you come here, Al? Can you come here? Steel song. Steel song. Okay. Oh, let's see. I don't know. You know, whenever anybody asks me to do a song, I go blank. Why? You know, over the years, we learned a lot of songs, right? And so if we knew about three or four songs, it would be easy to say, oh, I think I'll do that song. But, you know, there, 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 there's so many songs. So, here, here's one, okay, and can do it in A? Yeah. A. Yeah. Okay, here's a sing-along song. And we're gonna take you to the other side of the island. They call it Central Oahu, some call it the west side. And it's called Eva. Now, everybody knows where Eva is, right? Everybody knows where Eva is. Do you realize that Eva is actually Honouli Uli? It's called Hono Uli Uli. And so here's a song that talks about the shells of Eva in Hono Uli Uli. the one the old timers would sing along oh, even, even sing when along. I go to Japan and I perform over there and I sing this song it's surprising that you know the Japanese know these songs they know a lot of songs and not not only three or four verses they know all the yeah. verses all ten of them <laughs> it's amazing amazing, amazing. Yeah. Speaking of influences of uh, Hawaiian music or the ultimate flattery to Hawaiian slack guitar, the style of playing, unique style of playing uh, guitar in Hawaiian way, the world's greatest guitar player, you guys all know him probably, Chet Atkins. Yeehaw. You guys know him? Right? You bet. 
and he came to Hawaii, played in a golf tournament, and went to a garage party afterwards and in Palolo, and heard this beautiful slack key guitar music being played. He went home to Nashville and recorded it on one of his platinum albums. And he called it, he didn't know the title of the song, but he called it Hawaiian Slack Key Guitar. And when we heard it, they would play it on our local radio station, KCCN. We go, hey, that's Chet Atkins playing, but he's playing a version of a country, a twang version of, uh, with that twang guitar of the uh, Opihi Moi Moi. So when I got to meet Chet years later at a, at a Garrison Kaler Prairie Home Companion show, he had come down with Johnny Gimbel, Peter Ostrowski, and as he asked me, he said, son, come in the backstage and play, pick me a song. I go, oh man, I gotta think fast. He's the world's greatest guitar player. <laughs> but he paid the ultimate flattery. I said, Chet, remember this song you recorded? It's called Opihi Moi Moi. And so that's the ultimate flattery you could play to, pay to um, Hawaiian slack guitar. But here's that beautiful song that influenced many, many of our young uh, Hawaiians at that time of to play the Hawaiian slack guitar. Opihi Moi Moi. And uh, rock, uh, first recorded by the great Leonard Kwan Sr. And um, we were fortunate during our university days of Alan and I to have his son Leonard Kwan, Keala, Ju Keala Kwan Jr. to uh, been one of our classmates and performed some of his father's music and introduced me to his father, Leonard Sr. So this is one of the great Hawaiian uh, songs of all time. That's Hawaiian when you hear that. Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> um, you know, some of the 
great uh, Hawaiian slacky guitar got started with many stories, and one of it, one of them is that the Paniolo of um, Hawaiian cowboys first started to play Hawaiian slacky guitar when they got the guitars from the Mexican vaqueros that taught the Hawaiians how to rope cattle back in the 1870s. So here's a song that we're going to do to pay tribute to our Hawaiian cowboys, and there's, that's a whole other genre of Hawaiian music is um, the, the Hawaiian paniolo songs, you know, they, they were, you know, real rough and ready kind of rough and tumble guys after a hard day of working, they're in for a night of good drinking and storytelling and then love making after that too. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. So they were a special breed of men, you know. And they went to Wyoming, uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming in 1907, Iko Aperti, Archie They won the world, Archie Ka'awa took third place and Iko Aperti took first place in the World Roping Championship. So that's amazing. Yeah? Two Hawaiians from Parker Ranch going all the way, halfway across the country to Cheyenne, Wyoming and, and beating out the competition of all the American cowboys. Here's that song proclaiming their victory in Wyoming, a Hawaiian song of the interpretation of that state's name called Wyomina. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
And to, and to make that story even better about Archie and uh, Ikua is they, uh, they rode on borrowed horses. They took their horses up and they couldn't, they couldn't get them to, Wy to Wyoming. So they said, oh, these guys from Hawaii, uh, we'll just give them these donkeys over here. And they still won the, the <laughs> world championship. <laughs> Here's a love song of, of um, the Hawaiian cowboys. It says, the kaula ili that I just sang about, that's the rawhide skin rope. They can crack it like a whip, and it was so amazing the things they could do with that rawhide skin rope, unlike the, you know, the regular jute lariat that the American cowboys would use. So this song is actually, that's the title of this song, is the kaula ili. Get your rawhide skin rope, get ready to ride and lasso up, but you know what you catch is <laughs> it's going to be your prize, your trophy. And there's many, many verses of this song. We're only going to sing two, but they go on and on. The next guy would come on and sing his verse and brag and do one better than the next guy. So can you imagine around the campfire at night singing, bragging of their bravado of what they lassoed? <laughs>
skin rope out and get ready to ride. One more song, Hannah, of that Pocker Ranch legacy. Famous are those Rough Riders, Ikua <laughs> Purdy, Archikawa. That's right. Kila Kila, the Rough Riders. songs tonight and uh, this afternoon and before we have to say aloha how about if we have Kalani do um, a song that uh, yeah. is um, it, I like this is one of my f I like this song because it sings of the hard working Georges out there Hana Kiyoki how many hard working Georges does anybody know <laughs> oh, no, not only me <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, this yeah. is a. Uh, um, uh, King David Kalakawa's fleet of racing canoes, and this was his favorite canoe that would always win. Hana Kiyoki. Come on. 
Is there time? Can we do one, one more song there? Um, you want it? No, it's okay. Okay, he said one time more. Yeah, here's a, <clears throat> here's a uh, favorite song among many Hawaiians. And, you know, um, Kalani and I got to play many, many years with Martin Pahinui. And he passed on. And I got to play also many years with Brother Cyril Pahinui. Many fond memories of Kanikapila and, and uh, in my younger days, getting together with Gabby and all the family and friends in the backyard of Bell Street and Waimanalo. Brought back such great memories, you know, good times and music goes on for days and days. And um, I was doing a funeral uh, service this morning. One of my close friends, a uh, mom, passed away at the Mililani Memorial Park, and that's where Sonny Chillingworth, another one of the great Hawaiian uh, musicians and slacky guitars, he had his services over there and just brought back memories of Cyril uh, and I being over there with Tony B. We started, we, it started in the midday, and we were playing music outside the chapel as people coming in and kept going. And this is from the middle of the day, and then when finally the service was over, we had went up to the gravesite, and, and we started playing music at the gravesite for Sonny after he played on. And in the tradition of Sonny and Gabby, we stayed there, Cyril and I, were, and Tony B and Sonny's brother Cliff, we were playing music till one o'clock in the morning <laughs> at, at the gravesite in Mililani, Memorial <laughs> Park. So, you know, those kind of days, and the cooler, the cooler never ran dry. The guys would bring the, 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 the fishing ice chest coolers, <laughs> bottomless coolers, and the music just kept going, and I'm sure we gave Sonny one of the best send-offs you could ever give. So it is a song that he loved to play, and we all love to hear this song, and it reminds us of those good days, uh, good fun times in Bell Street in the backyard. He loved it. Yeah. 